Today I'm going to show you the intuition and logic behind the linked lists and at the end I'll show you the code so you can really understand what is going on without focusing on one programming language. So these are the most common linked lists. Singly linked list where each node has a pointer to the next node. Doubly linked list where each node has a pointer to the next and the previous node and a circular linked lists where the last node points to the first node. Today I will focus on singly linked lists but the logic behind stays almost the same. Let's give a formal definition of a linked list. Like arrays, linked list is a linear data structure. Unlike arrays, linked list elements are not stored at a predefined location in order. Rather, the elements are linked using pointers. So let's take a visual look at how we represent a linked list and nodes. In here we have three nodes and each node contains some data of any type and a pointer to the next node. And the linked list is basically a collection of those nodes. The first node is called the head and this node is special because everything as you will see starts from the first node. This is the basic idea of a single linked list. When we create the list, let's also create a head and call that our starting point. Every time we want to do something with the list, let's start with the head and move on the next element. That is also the downside of the linked lists because you can't just access the middle element like in the arrays, rather you have to start from the head. Because it's special, we store it in a separate variable and always know where our head is. Every other element is accessed using the next. Now that you know how it looks like, let's simulate how adding and removing elements looks like. Let's say you want to add the element at the end of the list. How do you do that? Well, you just have to make the last node point to the new node. How about deleting elements? The node that points to that node should just jump to the next node. One last thing that we will cover visually is traversing. Let's say that you have stored some phone numbers in a linked list and you want to access all of them and do something with them. How do you go over each element? Let's take a look at an example. As always, we start with the head. So how do we access the next element? The next element is equal to head.next. And when we are on that element, we say that element.next. But when do we stop? Well, when our element next is equal to null, we stop. So you just write the while loop with this condition. Now that you know what's going on and how it works, let's write it into code. But remember, when you are solving problems, always try to visualize what is happening with the nodes, as it will help you a lot. On the screen you can see the code for a linked list. A special element, as I said, is the head, because we always want to access it, and the list only has one head. And then every other element is accessed by using the next. Then we model the node. It holds some data of any type, but let's just use ints for now, and it points to the next node. We also have a constructor that puts the next to null by default, and it sets the data equal to the data we pass it. As you can see, the basic code is really simple, and the next thing we're going to see is how to add elements, how to remove them, and how to traverse the list. As we already showed, insertion at the end is really simple. You just make the last element point to the new one. There are some tricks though, so let's take a look at the code. As you can see here, we pass the data and we pass the list in which we want to insert our data. First, you just create the new node which you are going to insert. Then you have to check if the list is empty and if it is empty, you make the first element your head. And if it isn't, you go down to the last element and just insert the new element you just created. And then you just return the list. Let's now delete some elements. 
I'll split this into three cases. First case, head holds the element that we need to delete. If our head holds the element, we just change it to head.next and that's it. You lost the reference to head and you just keep going from the next position. Second case, we have to travel to the element that we need. For this, we will need to create a help node called previous, so we can link the previous node to the next node. That way we lose the middle element and that's it. The last thing I will show you is the traversing. Let's say that you need to print all the elements. We have to jump on each element starting from head until we reach the end. It's a simple code snippet as you can see on the screen. We have all the necessary information because each node contain, contains the address to the next node. So when you start from the head, after you print the head, you just jump to head.next and so on until you reach the null pointer. I hope this video on a single link list was helpful and that it gave you some intuition on what is going on behind the screen. Always try to visualize what is happening before solving a given problem and it will help you a lot. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss a video. See you next time.